Bardahl presents the 1961 World's Championship Hydroplane Race. I'm Rod Belcher, sports director of the King Broadcasting Company, Seattle. On August 6, 1961, I had the good fortune to be assigned to call the most exciting boat race in the history of that sport. Here on Lake Washington, seven of the world's fastest, most powerful racing craft, the top flight unlimited hydroplanes, awaited the starting gun. Stakes were high. $40,000 in prize money, the Seafair Trophy for the world's championship. Here's the lineup ready to start. Miss US-1 of Detroit. Miss Reno, Miss Spokane, Miss Seattle 2, Gale 5 of Detroit, Miss Century 21 of Seattle, and the metallic green U-40, Miss Bardall. Miss Bardall, 1958 national champion, comes to the starting line as the comeback boat. The Green Dragon is the old champion out of retirement to meet her challengers. Ted Jones, acknowledged the top hydro designer and builder, was with me to call the Seafair Trophy race a 45-mile test of endurance and skill of men and machines. Three heats of five laps each, a furious contest of racemanship and daring at speeds up to 180 miles per hour. Very, very well positioned. Okay, a little, uh, little more than 30 seconds. Now exactly 30 seconds to the start of this big one. This is the first heat, and one of the boats is having trouble on the backside. Gale that, 5. Gale 5. Gale 5 had a little trouble, but uh, apparently started again, but she may be late. 20 seconds to go. Sarts has swung way wide and it will come down in front of the barge apparently. 15, 12 seconds to go. Oh, this is going to be a pretty good start. Doesn't look like anybody's in danger of beating the gun. Five seconds to go. Gale 5 is That is going to be Miss Seattle and Miss Reno and Miss Century 21 and Fargo. A good start. Miss Seattle 2, Dallas Sarts leads the way. Followed by Fargo. And Miss Spokane, Miss U.S., Gale, and Century 21 across the line in last place. Now we get to look at the boats as they come at you. And Miss Seattle 2 should be the first one to cross over. There's the Miss Seattle 2 cutting in front of the other boats, leading on the outside. Dallas Sartz taking her through the corner there. He took the outside and uh, had a little bit of a lead as he went across the line. Miss Seattle 2 still leading. Now the critical point where they have to run through a lot of slop and Bardall. perhaps take some water. Bardall is in the number two spot. And as they come off the turn, it is Miss Seattle 2. And Bardall may have had some trouble in the water there. Boy, the boats are all buried in the spray. Miss Seattle 2 leading up the back chute. Bardall number two. Reno is running number three with Schley and is very close for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. There's the lead boat, Miss Seattle 2. And Bardall is trying to press with Ron Musson, a very talented hydro jockey pursuing him. And Bardall has taken the inside. Here's the race for third, fourth, and fifth we go. It's U.S. in third on the Miss Spokane and Miss Reno. And then Gale 5 and Miss Century 21 is running in seventh place somewhat surprisingly. Okay, as they come around the turn, Bardall has moved to the outside as uh, Sartz hooks the buoys and drives Musson wide. Musson may try to take him on the straightaway here, but Miss Seattle 2 has good straightaway speed. They're coming down now, a thousand feet from the completion of lap one. Miss Seattle 2 is the lead boat. There on the right, there it is. And very close is Bardall behind. That was the Bardall. Going back to third place. It's Miss U.S., Miss U.S., and Miss Reno. Very close. 108 miles an hour for the first lap. And Spokane passes Gale, and Bill Munsey tries to get into the race. There you see the race for first place. And uh, trying to move to the outside there is Bardall again. And this might be close coming out of the right turn. We'll have to watch this one extremely closely. Miss Seattle 2 and Bardall head and head and Bardall goes to the outside and has taken the lead. Bardall on the outside, the left boat on your screen takes the lead but Sartre still has the inside and now he goes to the fore. And there's cheering from all over the barges and the race cars here. Sartz has poured it on and has better acceleration than Bardall after Musson took it through the turn beautifully. A great race for first and second up the back stretch on lap two. And the other boats are starting to string out, but there still could be plenty of boat race left. There's a large gap between second and third place. There's your lead boat on the left hand side of the screen, and that's Sartz just taking, uh, going rather hot into the turn. U.S. going dead in the water. U.S. has gone dead in the water, Ted Jones reports, right out in the middle of the course on the back stretch, and could be a hazard there. Meantime, Spokane has taken over third place. 
Someone else is out over there. Somebody else is dead? That's the Gale. The Gale and U.S., the two Detroit boats, are dead on the far side of the course, halfway up the back stretch. Here's the race, coming down to the uh, end of lap two, and it's still Miss Seattle two on the inside. Leading Bardall on the outside, across, now. There's Bardall, finishing. Back for third place, Miss Bocan, followed by a real close race between Miss Reno and Miss Century 21. That speed was 105 plus for the second lap. Here's the Miss Century 21 coming along in fourth place. Fourth place. Fifth place is Reno. And two boats are dead. And uh, Ted, how much of a hazard could they be on the far side there? I believe they're both out of the way. They're going to turn to the right towards the log move. I believe they're okay. Okay, and uh, getting back to the head end of the race. And there you see Bardall coming up on the outside again. He went wide, Musson did, took her wide, and there's a real duel up the back stretch. These boats are head and head. Bardall has a slight lead, but they're almost dead even. It appears in the screen that Bardall's leading, but it's part camera angle. Now it's not, it's more than camera angle now. Bardall has a lead of a couple of seconds. Sarts is trying to stay with it on the inside. And let's see if uh, Musson tries to cut across in the corner. Ron Musson and Bardall is leading. And Century 21 has gone into third place now, ahead of Spokane. Here's the race. Here's the race for first. Ron Musson has forced uh, Sartz, I think, to go through part of his wake, and Sartz has slowed down on the Miss Seattle too perceptibly. And Bardall is taking a hot turn, a real hot turn for Bardall, and here he's squared away for the run down the chute in front of the barges here. Ted Jones. Uh, he's doing a terrific job. He outturns Ellis uh, on every count. Okay. He has about a thousand foot lead now. Bardall is across, leading at the end of lap three. And here is Miss Seattle 2 finishing lap three now. Six seconds behind the leader. That lap was 110 miles an hour, and no doubt about it, that was a hot lap. That was what Bardall needed to get back in the race and take the lead. Right. Here comes a real duel for third and fourth. Century 21 on the inside, Spokane on the outside. Spokane goes by. And coming along in fifth place is Miss Reno with Russ Schley. And Rush Lake has his boat cutting out again and detonating. Here's the uh, shot of two boats coming for third and fourth places. Miss Century 21 and Miss Spokane. Century 21 and there's Spokane cutting across in front of the Century 21 as you saw. Nice shot there, fellas. Stan Davis in that end of the course with his camera. There's the Bill Muncy driven craft, Century 21. Meantime, back up the head end of the race, Bardall has lengthened out its lead by a couple of buoy markers, a couple of thousand feet, and there's the Bardall leading, just about to enter the left turn. This is lap four coming up, remember? The end of lap four, there's the number two boat, Miss Seattle 2, Dallas Sartz driving. Way back now for Miss Spokane with Rex Manchester. Miss Century 21 is hidden in the spray and right with uh, Spokane. And then back to the uh, Miss Reno. This is the Reno, the fifth place boat. Okay, into the uh, run for the last thousand feet through the completion of lap four. Here's the Green Dragon, Bardall leading. Bardall is across. Here's the boat that's still running in second place, Miss Seattle 2, Ted Jones. Uh, that lap is 110 again. I wish Ronnie Musson would slow it down because he's got a terrific lead. He can take it easy now on the Bardall. Okay, Seattle 2 is across, and we still have a great race for third and fourth, and uh, Spokane almost hooked that time. He bounced a lot, but stayed okay. Spokane leading this century 21. They're almost even. Only a full length as they cross the line. And now century 21 tries to pour it on on the outside. It's a great race for third and fourth, and then one of the boats cut out. Here goes Miss Reno across in fifth place. There's the Miss Seattle 2. That's the second place boat. He's uh, halfway through the right turn. Up the back chute, meantime, comes Bardwell, and there you're getting a look at the uh, Miss Spokane as she heads into the turn, and apparently has, again, taken the corner ahead of Century 21. There's Century 20 run running in fourth place. And Muncie has had to work his way up through the field. He started dead last. Two, bo two boats have gone dead. They are the Gale and the Miss U.S., the two Detroit boats. They're sitting in the water in the back stretch. And here goes the lead boat, the Green Dragon, into the left turn. 
He's only got a quarter of a lap to go to finish this uh, heat. And another great race for third and fourth, meantime, up the back stretch. Seattle 2 is still second. Going to the third and fourth place race. If we can do that, there it is, up the back chute. Century 21 on the left on the outside. Spokane on the inside. Remember, this is the last lap. And Spokane shoots by on the inside to take the lead going into the corner again. Meantime, here's Bardo getting the checkered flag. This Bardo with Ron Musson wins the first of these three great heats. And now it's going to be a real good question of whether Muncie can come up on the outside. There's the third and fourth place race again as Muncie goes to the outside to try to get in front of Rex Manchester and Miss Spokane. Miss Seattle 2 is hanging on for a second place finish. That's the boat that just went through your screen. Now let's look at this final thrilling duel here. Muncie on the outside, Spokane on the inside. It's real close. There goes Century 21 finishing third. And Spokane fourth. So Miss Bardall, the old champ, came through with flying rooster tail in the first heat of the Seafair race. Bardall's entry is one-third of the way home, thanks to terrific acceleration and driver Ron Musson's skill at the buoy turns and down the chute. Now here are the standings at this point. Miss Bardall leading with 400. Miss Seattle, 2 with 300. In third place, Miss Century 21 with 225. Miss Century 21 is formerly the Miss Thriftway, renamed this season to promote Seattle's World's Fair opening in April 1962. Then, Miss Spokane with 169. And a sidelight here is that Rex Manchester, driver of the Spokane Lilac Lady, is son-in-law of industrialist Ole Bardal. Then, Miss Reno with 127, and the two Detroit boats, Miss US 1 and Gale 5, did not finish. The warning gun has sounded for the second heat of the World's Championship hydroplane race. Six seconds, five. Oh, they're going to be a little close. There's the gun. I think they're all right. Hard on me. But there goes Century 21, and there goes Spokane. Ted, I think uh, Bardall was caught going a little slow to avoid jumping the gun. Yes, it was. Bill Muncy, the Century 21, right, got right by him. Let's and watch him. Uh, let's watch him come for the turn and see which boat crosses in front first. There's our head-on shot, and it's going to be close with. Uh, Oh, look at that boat take off out of the water. Couldn't even identify the boat. Bardall uh, made it. That was the Bardall. Right, the Bardall's still in there then, and the other boat you see going to the outside is Miss Century 21. And Bardall got going again okay because she's hugging the pole position. Meantime, going to the extreme inside is Miss Reno. And Miss Reno is in contention now with the Bardall as they come up the back chute, and the boat on the outside is Miss Century 21. You can't even see her for the spray and rooster tail. It's a three-boat race with Spokane running fourth and Miss Seattle two running fifth. Up the back chute goes Bardall the Green Dragon. And running number two is uh, Century 21 in the spray. In third position and hanging in there tight is Miss Reno on the inside with Rush Lay. And coming up a strong fourth is the Lilac Lady Miss Spokane with Miss Seattle two in fifth place and still not out of it. Just as we expected, another whale of a boat race as they head into the left turn. This is still lap one of the second heat of the three-heat race. And Ronnie Musson has done a great job of cornering again. There you see him. Musson came out of the turn first. And now he heads for the straightaway. But Miss Reno saved a lot of ground on the inside. That's Miss Reno on the inside. Very close. And now between boats, Muncie tries to come up in the first one. In the century 21. Right on the Now here's Reno. Reno on the inside. Reno on the was 107 miles an hour plus. And Miss Seattle 2 is running fifth still, and I wouldn't count any boat out of this race. It's still a whale of a brace. They're bouncing through the turn is the Miss Bardall. He goes into those turns pretty hot, Ted. Yes, and he comes out pretty wide, but he keeps his speed up, and this is what counts. I believe that first lap would have been much faster, only they all got a slow start here, and they didn't have any speed when they crossed the line. Starting to come out of the right turn. The green job, uh, Miss Bardall has lengthened the lead a little bit, but again, saving ground on the inside was that number two boat, Miss Reno. Let's see if the uh, saving ground did him any good. And in third place, in good position, is Century 21. That was the Reno you just looked at. Now you're back to the head of the race with the Bardall. Okay, here we have the race for third and fourth. A better look at it with uh, the Lilac Lady, Miss Spokane. Well, the boats are all in there close in the back chute. The head end of the race is Bardall on the left. There's the Bardall. 
Reno being pressed as Century 21 tries to come up on the outside. There's a good, close, tight shot going around the left curve is the Miss Bardall. Ron Musson, remember, won the first heat, and he's out after 400 more big points. Here's the lead of it, the head of the air race. Bardall coming off the turn, again going wide, but keeping the speed up, as Ted said, and a good race for second and third, especially. There's the end of lap two now by Bardall. And Reno and Century 21 are in a hot one for second and third. Reno leading, and on the inside in the spray is Century 21. And that was 110 miles an hour that lap, and for fourth and fifth place, a great place for fourth and fifth. There goes Seattle too, past the Lilac Lady, and very close for fourth and fifth. Some great individual duels and an overall duel. We still have after two laps, Bardall leading with Reno second, Century 21 third, and Seattle two and Spokane are neck and neck for fourth and fifth. Coming out of the uh, right turn, just about to head into the straightaway on the far side is the lead boat, Miss Bardall, with Ron Musson having grabbed the lead and hung in there all the way. And for second and third, it's a great one. Century 21 has taken the inside and staying there. And there's the race between Century 21 and Miss Reno. Miss Reno now on the outside. And they are head and head up the back chute, dead even. And they're holding position. Now Century 21 forges to the front just a little bit by a couple of boat lengths. And as they head into the turn, Muncie has the best position in Miss Century 21, forcing Reno to the outside. That's the white and orange Miss Century 21. Now we go back to the head end of the race. Oh, they're still on the second and third, beg your pardon. Here's uh, Century 21, and you can't see the other boat in the spray. There they come, swinging wide is Miss Reno. Meantime, finishing lap three in front of us is the Bardall. And the number two boat, Miss Century 21, has a little bigger gap now, and that's still a fast race. 109 miles an hour for the lead boat. And the race for fourth and fifth has developed into Miss Seattle 2 going into fourth, leading by just about one buoy marker over Miss Spokane. Here's the uh, right end of the course, the right turn, with Bardall leading. Oh, look at the spray kick up as he dug in around the corner a little bit. On the far side, you see the number one boat. This is the Bardall leading, heading up the back chute. In second place, Miss Century 21, as Bill Muncy tries valiantly to close the gap. He might be making a little bit of progress at that. Your third place boat is still Miss Reno with Colonel Rush Slay. And it's a little bigger margin now, back to fourth, where Dallas Sartz is running in Miss Seattle, too. And to fifth, where the Lilac Lady Miss Spokane with Rex Manchester is holding position. Back to the lead boat we go. There's the Bardall, just uh, starting into the left turn. Bardall is in a position to get 800 points if she can hold this position. And if they stay as they are now, Century 21 will be in overall second place. But more of that later. Here's the Bardall. Just about to come off the turn and start running down the straightaway in front of the two barges. And the second place boat is in the background. And that's Muncie in Century 21. Oh, who Muncie may yet make a race out of it. Muncie almost spun out of it. Oh, oh, Muncie spun out. He went into the infield. He hooked and spun. Ted, tell us more about it. He uh, spun out and went on the inside of the buoy. Now he has to go around the buoy and get back in the position. And there's He's a close, close quarters over there. Right. He drives that fifth place boat, the fourth place boat. Dallas starts to the outside. Yes, he should have waited for Dallas. And there's uh, uh, Muncie got her going again. Meantime, at the other end of the course, we have uh, Miss Bardall still leading, coming uh, into the right turn. And uh, there's the Bardall. Century 21 is now running in fourth place. They're in this order. Bardall first, Miss Reno second. Century, tw uh, Century 21 fourth, but Miss Seattle two is third. And the right turn action here involves a couple of boats. There's the Century 21 coming through, running in fourth place behind Miss Seattle two, which is now in third. After Muncie hooked and spun after coming around the exit buoy. There's Bardall with a seemingly impregnable lead here with a, only a little more than a quarter of a lap to go to finish the race. Here we go back through the field. 
Here's the uh, first place boat, Bardal, on the left turn. Now back to Miss Reno, running in second place with Rush Schley. The third place boat. There he comes in, Dallas Sarks and Miss Seattle 2 and picking up ground. Then the fourth place boat, Century 21 with Muncie. And running fifth and last, just coming out of the right turn is Miss Bocan. There's Bardal across, the winner for the second straight time in the big race. Here's the second place boat, Miss Reno, which has run a good, consistent, steady race with Rush Schley. They slowed down a bit on the fifth lap to 106 miles an hour. Here's the lead boat in the right turn as he's finished his race, taking a cooling out lap. This is the Bardall. Meantime, Reno has gone by the finish line, finishing her five laps. Here comes Miss Seattle 2, which will be the third place finisher this time. And there's uh, Bill Muncy who will be a very disappointed guy, I'm sure, for his fourth place finish in this century 21. And finally, he's not too far back there either, the lilac lady, Miss Spokane. Miss Bardall led the pack from wire to wire in a brilliant second heat. Here's how the field stacks up now. With Miss Bardall leading, 800 points. Miss Seattle, two with 525. Miss Reno at 427. Miss Century 21, 394 points, and Miss Spokane with 296. From the announcer's barge, Ted Jones and I added up the points. The situation seemed clear. We thought that Miss Bardall, driven by Ron Musson, had to finish at least second in the final heat to take the world championship. However, Ron Musson knew that he could take the championship with a fourth place finish if Miss Seattle 2 should fade back in the field. Let's see what happened. There you can see four of the five boats in your picture. And they are the Miss Spokane, the Miss Century 21, the Miss Reno, and in the spray, one is hidden so we can't even see it. I'm looking for the fifth boat. There are at least four up there, jockeying for position now with 25 seconds to go. The fifth one is up there, but it's hidden in the, the spray. Is, there you can see all five as they turn. The boat, uh, difficult to identify them right now. The boat on the inside is Miss Reno. Then you come to Century 21, then to Miss Spokane, then to Bardall. I can see those four, and there's one back there on the outside. That's uh, Miss Seattle 2. Here they come. Four seconds, three. It's going to be a good start. And here comes Century 21 to take the lead. Century 21 lead. And Miss Spokane and Bardall. And Seattle 2 goes hard on the outside, trying to catch them all. They're really driving for the first turn. And there they come. On the inside is Reno. Then you see Century 21 and Spokane and Bardall. And really bouncing was Dallas Sarts and Miss Seattle 2 on the outside. One of the boats swung wide and another boat came to the inside. Swinging wide was Miss Spokane there. You see the lead boat on the right is Century 21 on the inside, hidden in the spray is Miss Reno. On the outside, the boat there appearing to be right on the tail of uh, Century 21 was Miss Spokane. But coming out of the turn, you can see now that Miss Century 21 with Bill Muncy, having once got a good start, is running one. Spokane is running number two. The start was completely legal, as we expected. Okay, now Century 21 has the inside track, moving to the outside and trying to gain ground up the back chute is Miss Spokane. And where is Bardall? Bardall's running three. And Miss, there's the race for third and fourth. Bardall on the outside running third and not by much over Miss Reno with Rush Schley. As Schley drives hard, they're head and head. There you see it, they're exactly even. And now Schley goes ahead and Miss Reno and Bardall drops back to fourth place. Remember, it takes a second place finish by Bardall to guarantee top money. Here's the head end of the race between Muncie and Manchester, the M boys again. Miss Century 21 and almost hidden in the spray is Miss Spokane. There's the shot as uh, Muncie likes to come to the inside and hug those buoys as Ted Jones mentioned. On the outside is Manchester and Manchester may give him a challenge here, but Muncie's leading by about 500 feet in the Miss Century 21. This is the completion of lap one. Century 21, Spokane. And here comes Bardall up to third. Bardall takes third. And that lap, Ted Jones, was 112 and a half miles an hour. Amazing. Here they come at you in the right turn. And on the inside, Century 21. On the outside, turning right with him is Rex Manchester and Miss Spokane. It's still a close race for first and second. Dallas Sarts and Miss Seattle, too, is running well back. So he's got to pick up much ground, and he doesn't look good. He's riding uh, with a lot of bumps as if something is rather seriously wrong with the boat. Coming out on the far side, Miss Century 21 still leads over the Lilac Lady, Miss Spokane. 
Okay, we have the back shoot run. Miss Century 21 leading over Miss Spokane. And we'll, in just a moment, we'll project the order of finish if they should stay this way. This is the first place boat, Miss Century 21. Bill Muncy, first time he's been in first place all day. Hanging right in there is Rex Manchester and Miss Spokane. And challenging on the outside as they head into the turn. The third place boat is again Miss Reno, which is past Bardall. Reno, here's Bardall. And Bardall not running as well. He got a, a poorer start and has not done the job this time. Okay, they're coming through the turn. There's the uh, Miss Reno, by the way. Our Miss, uh, here we go to the other end of the race. Still, Miss Century 21 on the inside. And uh, Manchester's hanging in there and he's gonna try to challenge here. Here's the straightaway run in front of us. Century 21 leads. And there's Spokane. The margin is two seconds. Two seconds is all. The third place boat is still Reno being pursued by Bardall, and Bardall is not running as well. That was 110.7 miles an hour. If they uh, finish the way they're finishing now, and listen to this, if they hold position now, Bardall would win the race by 10 points. It would be Bardall 1054 and Century 21 1044. So if Bardall can hold fourth place and if Century 21 wins, Bardall would still win overall and win the big money. In fifth place is Miss Seattle 2. Here's the race for first and second and it's still close enough to be interesting. Bill Muncy and Miss Century 21 on the inside up the back chute. Being pursued by the Lilac Lady, Miss Spokane, who can't quite seem to catch uh, the C-21. The third place boat is still Miss Reno and uh, the Green Dragon, Miss Bardall, hanging back and forth. He knows, however, that he doesn't have to push too hard in this race to still win the big dough, $10,000. There is the Bardall. Ron Musson doing the driving, playing it conservatively. Maybe he has to by the performance of his boat. Maybe he's doing it that way on purpose. This is the leading boat that still may win the money. All right, we switch up to the head end of the race, of this heat anyway, where Century 21 is coming down for the final 1,000 feet of lap three. And the gap over Spokane is bigger this time. Now he finishes. Here's Miss Spokane. Finishing now, six seconds behind. 112 miles an hour for that lead boat. Well, uh, Ted Jones, once once he got her going, he's going big. Oh yes, when he's out there, he really puts his foot in it. Here's the third place boat coming across. Miss Reno finishes now. And there's the Bardall. And the Bardall is still in position to win this race. Again, recap. Here we go. Uh, I'll recap those projected points for you in a moment. But this is the lead of the race. Century 21. Just starting up the back stretch. Just coming out of the turn is the Lilac Lady, Miss Spokane, with Manchester. That was second place. Here's third and fourth. Third place is Miss Reno. You just got a glimpse of Bardall in the turn. And still running fifth and pretty well behind is Miss Seattle, too, and apparently out of it. That's uh, the Bardall there. Still finishing in fourth, but still running number one in the overall race. So even a fourth place finish in this heat could win it for the Bardall. Here's Century 21 coming down the straight away in front of us for the completion of lap four, which he does now. He has really got out there and has flown in that boat. There's the Spokane, which is now 16 seconds behind the leader and apparently has no chance. Running in third place is Miss Reno and uh, Bardall still running fourth. Here's the Bardall. And remember, this is the boat that should win the race. One more lap and Bardall will win it in this position. Into the final turn of her race is the Century 21 with Bill Muncy. And uh, now he takes it easy on this turn. Cut it way down, now starts up again. And he won't have a tough time winning the uh, heat, but he just won't have enough points to win the race at the way it's going now. Okay, here comes the Century 21. And this uh, favorite boat around Seattle had uh, tough going in the first two heats, but finally came on strong today in this one. He's across, gets the checkered flag and the gun. 
650 points, but not enough to do it, apparently. All right, let's watch the other boats finish. Here comes Miss Spokane. Miss Spokane coming off the turn. Muncie's final lap was 109.09, .09, so his whole race is going to be about 110 miles an hour or better. Here comes Miss Spokane. The Lilac Lady will finish second in this heat. And now it's going to be Colonel Rush Schley. Very fine fella. Coming across in third place. And finally, here's the winning boat overall, the Bardo. There's your champion. There's your world champion, Hydroplane. Having won the World's Championship Seafair Hydroplane Classic.